when you want to make a super heterodyne radio you always need an EF filter and an EF amplifier and in this video I want to get more in detail about the EF amplifier. It can only be something about EF filters and uh, also on uh, 455 kHz. So not uh, 10.7 or other uh, EF uh, filter frequencies. Here you see some filters. Uh, this is a ceramic filter. This is also a ceramic filter. And here you see a coil filter. And it consists of two coils on a ferrite, ferrite core with a kind of ferrite cap above it that keeps the frequency very sharp in the 455 kHz range. You can tune such a filter by tuning the core, in this case the white core in the middle. These are some um, circuits that all rely to um, EF and uh, superheterodyne radio circuits. In the first place, here we have a kind of basic um, EF amplifier. In this case it consists of a BC547B and we have here the one part of the filter. So in fact one part of this coil, two of these connections to the uh, collector lead and here is the emitter lead. With this potentiometer we set the amplification from the EF filter and with this potentiometer here we set the working point from the EF filter. That's very important. I can't stress enough how, how much the working point is. You can't get uh, circuits uh, working without a variable working point and you can set that with this potentiometer. So here is the, in fact here is the mixer or the first stage, EF stage, the, the, the first EF stage uh, has this uh, frequency dependent coil and here we get two signals in. One signal comes from the antenna, it comes in via 8 picofarad capacitor, an EF amplifier, output cap and then it goes to the base, the sensitive point from the first transistor, from the mixer. And at the same time we add here our VFO signal and that VFO signal must be approximately 455 kilohertz lower or higher than the signal that we receive on the antenna. And the aim from the mixer is to detect this frequency uh, difference. So nothing is mixed in the mixer in a superheterodyne radio. Uh, the only thing that you can say that there is frequency transformation. Set the frequency transformation, the working point with this potentiometer, use your scope, test it. And here you can see how the first stage from this coil filter is connected to the second stage. This is the second stage from the EF filter, also a BC547B, works very properly on 455 kHz, has a good amplification factor and we set the working point from the second transistor and at the same time the coil from the uh, EF filter is connected in the base circuit. These two coils are coupled and by aligning here the working point from the uh, second transistor we also set the, um, 
the way how the filter works. And here we take the amplified EF signal out. You can lead this for instance to a diode, a detection diode for, M for AM, amplitude modulation. This is the way to connect it. It's, it seems uh, quite strange perhaps because I've drawn it very far apart, but this is one part of the coil and this is the other part of the coil from the, from the EF filter coil. That's here. Here you can also see some other filters made by Philips. High quality filters with a very good bandwidth. And also necessary to tell that you can make the filter sharper or more or less sharp, peaking better on one, one frequency by this capacitor. I only have three minutes left on my uh, card from a camera so I have to do it very short. This is a ceramic filter and this is also a ceramic filter. Input, output, etc. The ceramic filter has a very high impedance at its input and at its output so you can connect it directly to the base from a transistor. Also here you can set the amplification and here you can take the amplified signal from your filter out, say via a 200 picofarad capacitor. This is the decoupling circuit, always necessary. Here you see a, another decoupling circuit. Uh, the function from such a decoupling circuit is that the amplified signals don't travel over the power supply line and cause many, many, many problems. Ceramic filter, input, output. Here it is again with the magnifying glass. Input, output. I never reverse the input and the output, so this is the only thing that I can tell about this ceramic filter. It's from Mitsumi, 455 kilohertz, approximately uh, 7 kilohertz wide. Because of the high impedance you can connect it directly to the first transistor. When that doesn't work, connect here a cap to decouple the filter from the input from the transistor. And of course in such a way that you, can, that you still can set the transistor to its working point. The working point, the amplification, the output, etc. So uh, the good thing from such a ceramic filter is that the impedance, input impedance and output impedance is very high. Uh, my camera says that I have only one minute left. So I pan the circuit and I wish you luck. The PFO can be uh, all kinds of frequencies, say between 1 MHz and 18 MHz or so. But this is the way to get all these circuits uh, to work.